If you're looking to study abroad in Japan, then you're in the right place. Hey guys, it's Mana, and today I'm going to be talking about 10 things that you should know before studying abroad in Japan. So I grew up in LA until I was 18, moved to Japan by myself when I was in college, and then from there I studied abroad in the Netherlands, but today we're going to be focusing on Japan because the Netherlands and Japan are quite different countries, so I think the Netherlands will be a whole different video. I'm going to have all the links to websites and the apps that I mentioned in the description box, as well as the timestamps for all the questions that I'll be answering. Let's get to it! Number one phone plan. Let me break it down for you. So there are three options that you can go with. One, you can choose to take an international phone plan from the current phone carrier that you have. If I'm being honest with you, I would advise you to not do that just because international phone bills are very expensive. Unless you're fine with that, unless you're really going for like maybe a month, it might not be worth it to get a SIM card or a phone plan in Japan, so that could be an option. But I recommend you to do option two, which is to buy a prepaid SIM card. If you're in Japan for let's say a semester abroad, I would recommend you to get a prepaid SIM card that you can get at places such as... Um, you can get tech stores like these ones. But if you're gonna be studying abroad in Japan for longer, such as a year to, you know, just maybe getting your full university or, you know, graduate degree, I recommend you to get a SIM card plan. Recently, there's been a lot of companies such as Line Mobile, Rakuten Mobile, Yahoo Mobile, those are the top three ones in Japan that have been coming out with a lot of fairly affordable SIM card plan options. So there's a bunch of other companies such as SoftBank and AU, those are like the big competitors but these newbies you could say are coming in and they're making a lot more affordable those are the three options but i recommend you to do option two or three number two transportation oh my gosh guys when i say public transportation in japan is amazing safe and on time, I mean it. If the train is about three minutes late, they are apologizing over the loudspeaker. Let's get into the nitty gritty of things. If you're gonna be in Japan, I highly recommend you getting a train card, but there's quite a few different trade cards. There's the Ikoka, the Suika, the Pasmo, and there's a few others, but please don't be confused by the name. They're just different names because they're run by different companies. The functionality is nearly identical. Almost everything is the same. Basically these train cards, I don't want to call it a train card because they apply to almost all public transportation. So you can use it for the train, the metro, the bus, and the monorail. This train card doesn't give you a discount. However, it does save you a lot of time and stress of buying a train ticket every single time. So these public transportation cards, you can basically buy at any train station. It costs approximately 500 yen, but it's a fun little souvenir that you can keep and remember your time in Japan. Half of the fun in studying abroad is traveling and seeing places. So while you're in Japan, obviously you're going to want to travel within the country. So let's say you wanted to go from like the north of Japan to the south of Japan. Taking the bullet train. Oh, the bullet train is a very, very fast train that takes you places really quickly. Okay. Can add up very quickly. However, if you buy this thing called the JR Pass, it makes it much more affordable. You cannot be a Japanese citizen to purchase this, so it's perfect for you guys watching this. But basically, you can purchase this JR Pass for a set duration of time, starting from a week to 21 consecutive days. And what this does is that you can get unlimited, unlimited train rides with the JR Train Company. It's a very cost-effective way to see Japan. And it's only for foreigners, so might as well take advantage of this great deal and see Japan. Best places to buy everyday necessities. Obviously, you do have to purchase a few everyday necessities, such as utensils and scissors, but Japan has got your back, guys. Just go to any 100 yen shop, and 100 yen is equivalent to one US dollar. It's basically like a dollar store, but Japan version, and they have everything. The ones I recommend are Daiso, Kandu, Seria, 
Those are three different companies that are all 100 yen stores. If you're looking for everyday necessities that are a little bit more high quality than the typical 100 yen store, I recommend you to go to places such as Loft or Tokyo Hanzu. Again, like the 100 yen stores, they pretty much have everything. And of course, if you don't want to be lugging around all these items that you purchased to and from the store, you can always opt to online shop. I would say the two major online stores that I used in Japan are one, Amazon, and two, Dakte. Amazon Japan is like 99% identical to Amazon US or Amazon UK or any other Amazon that you would see. Dakte is like the OG Amazon of Japan. I would say Dakte has a bigger share in products that you can buy in Japan. Moving on, here are three helpful apps that I recommend you download before getting to Japan. The first one obviously is Google Translate. Heads up, the majority of people can understand English, but they're not the most fluent when it comes to speaking English. There's definitely a language barrier that exists, but having Google Translate is going to be your best friend. The second app that you should have when you go to Japan is Line. It's a text messenger app. If you're looking to make Japanese friends or just text people that are living in Japan in general, I can guarantee you that 99.9% .9 of the population only uses line to text or make phone calls so make an account it just makes life so much easier and the third app I recommend you to download is a bookkeeping app of some sorts I personally use this app called Zyme but why I recommend you to download this is because Japan is a very cash-based country which is quite surprising because the country is so technologically advanced however cash is still the main method of payment I believe that there is a gradual shift happening from cash to more of a cashless payment. The government was actually really encouraging the Japanese people to start using more you know, credit cards and cashless payments in general because the Olympics were coming up. So there is more of a shift happening, but if you're at local restaurants or small supermarkets, the majority of the time they only accept cash. Because Japan is such a cash-based country, sometimes it's very easy to lose track of how much money you use. So having this app makes life so much easier for me to calculate how much money I've used on food and transportation and that type of vibe. Next up, health insurance. I'm sure before you study abroad, your school will force you to get health insurance because it's that important, but I'm just gonna put this in there because it's just health insurance. It's very important. You never know what's gonna happen. Please take advantage of the co-op system that they have there. The co-op has health insurance, they have travel insurance, every and any type of insurance. Along with that, they have a bunch of like travel plans that are for students, so you can travel around for cheap. Take advantage of student discounts. There are a ton of student discounts, but the thing is, along with almost everything in Japan, because we are in a Japanese-speaking country, these student discounts are advertised in Japanese for the most part. Even if you don't know any Japanese, maybe try memorizing this. It says Gakuwari, but Gakuwari is student discount. And when you see that, you'll be like, ah, there's a student discount at that restaurant. I mean, <laughs> If there's any Japanese that you're gonna learn, learn that. The most common places for a student discount to happen is at the movie theater, at like karaoke places. There's some student discounts for hair salons to get your nails done, that type of vibe. Just make sure to bring your student ID with you so you have proof that you're a student. So now that you're all settled and you know all the logistics, you're probably wondering, Mana, where do I hang out with all my new friends? Well, I'm glad you asked. I recommend karaoke. Karaoke was invented in Japan. They take it to a whole nother level. If you go to a karaoke room, they have tambourines, you can drink there. Singing with your friends always guarantees a good time. So karaoke, highly recommend. Number two is this place called Round One. Round One is basically an arcade, but on steroids. <laughs> I know, for real, you're probably laughing, but it's it's crazy there. So there's arcade, there's a bowling alley, you can go roller skating, you can play darts, and there's this thing called the Purikura photo booth, which is iconic. If you're gonna be in Japan, like, that's a fun thing to do. And, of course, because you're in Japan, there's so many beautiful shrines and temples and local areas that you can go and sightsee. If you're going in with knowing absolutely no one, say yes and you have opportunities. Join different study groups, try exploring all those cafes with your new friends. It's going to be great. It's going to be such a fun time. Hey, 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 don't be nervous. I know this is a lot of information I'm throwing at you. I was nervous before I moved to Japan too. When you're in Japan, when you have a question, this is my next advice. 
just ask for help. I know since the majority of Japanese people only speak Japanese, that might sound like weird advice, but then the thing with Japan, the majority of the people are so incredibly kind and helpful and polite that if you ask for help, chances are they will be willing to help you out. Just ask your classmates too because they know the best. They're the same age as you, they will be willing to help you out, so just ask for help. Everything will be okay, everything's gonna be fine, I know you're nervous, but it's gonna be okay, okay? I know staying abroad is expensive. I mean, you have to pay for the flight, your housing, food costs, but please don't stop that from you staying abroad because, because there are actually a lot of scholarship opportunities available for you to apply. Just check out your university's scholarship system. I know my university does that. I'm pretty sure your university might have it as well, but just check it out. There's probably a few scholarship opportunities within your school that you can apply to. Always try checking outside of your university, just Google things, and it might be a lot of work, but I mean, might as well try it out, right? If anything, I'm proud of you for already thinking about staying abroad. Taking the first step is scary, but you're here watching this video, which means that you have the idea of it. So if you have the idea, just talk to people, reach out for help, even if it's not Japan, Staying abroad anywhere is great and it's great life experience that I cannot wait for you to have. The last tip I have for you is to not be afraid to be by yourself. When I first moved to Japan and the Netherlands, I knew absolutely no one. I went in there with zero friends. Zero. I'm going to be blatantly honest with you, you're going to experience homesickness. You're in a different country with a whole different culture, way of living, customs. What I learned was to appreciate the time I have with myself. Making friends abroad is important and it's going to be so much fun for you to be able to travel around with your friends. But also, please don't be afraid to be by yourself and appreciate alone time as well. Being alone in a foreign country is scary. but it teaches you so much. It teaches you to be independent. It teaches you to trust yourself. And you gain this sense of confidence that you've never had before. Studying abroad was genuinely the best decision I've ever made in my life. And I'm proud of you for even thinking about it. You're gonna have the best time of your life. If you're interested in seeing how life was for me in Japan, I have a whole playlist of videos that I created. If you have any other questions, leave a comment below and I'll try to answer it the best as I can. Thank you so much for watching and I'm so excited for you to study abroad. You're gonna have so much fun. I'm proud of you. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.